WDBO. Keith calling from Daytona, or from Deltona. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, 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 how you doing? Yeah, hi, Larry. Hey, two yeah. questions for you. I got a 2012 Ford Explorer. Uh, can I use the uh, AIMS oil in the transmission? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. How many miles okay. do you have on How many miles do you have on that Explorer? It's about ninety thousand. Okay. Have you replaced the water pump yet? No. You need to. <laughs> Today. Yeah. I, yeah. I know it. Yeah, are, are you Are you fully aware? Of the consequences if that water pump goes bad. Uh, not really, no. It fills your crankcase full of coolant. Oh. And you've done taking out the engine before you noticed that all of your coolant is now mixed with your engine oil. Yeah. It's, an, it's, it's, a, it's an internal water pump. And if you don't get it replaced, you're going to wind up, well, let's put it like this. Used engine in that thing's probably going to run $6,500 that you're still going to have to do a water pump on. A reman, I mean, a completely remanufactured engine in that vehicle, it's going to be, you're going to be looking at about ten grand. You, you see what I'm saying? You, this is one of those things. You do your research on this, and, and you make darn sure that you completely understand what you're dealing with here. Because that water pump, any of them after 80,000 mile, you're fair game for it to just open up and fill the, fill the engine full of coolant. And it will, it will ruin the engine. Google this problem. Educate yourself on it. You need to know how important this is. We are replacing so many of these motors, we can't even get them. I mean, literally, they're out of them. We're, they're all on back order. We can't even get these engines. They're failing so often now because of the water pumps. But we, we, I've got to let you know that, so then you can make up your own mind what, what your plan of, or your course of action is, as they say. What's your question yeah, on it? Yeah, I study, better. study up on it, Keith. If not, you're going to have yeah, a bad I day. I guarantee you, you're going to have a bad day. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So now you understand okay, yeah, that one. That. Yeah, I'll, now, I'll definitely uh, look into that. All right. Give me your other problem. <laughs> you didn't know you had the first one. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, the Ford, the Ford, the. Ford pickup, the transmission, I noticed a couple of weeks ago, uh, it started slipping a little bit, and then when I go in reverse and go put it in drive, it was real slow to go into, into drive from reverse. So I pulled, so I pulled the, I drained it, I pulled the pan down, and it's, it, now it's had AMSOIL transmission fluid in it for most of its life. Uh -huh. So I pulled, I pulled, I dropped the pan, and it's extremely clean. I mean, hardly, I mean, nothing in the bottom of the pan at all. Uh, other than the magnet having some gook stuck to it, that's normal, you know. But uh, other other than that, I don't. I don't. What do you think? You think it could be something electrical, maybe in it, the solenoids or something else? So you got a Possibly. slow. You got a slow engage in reverse, and in if you so put it, it. Go ahead. Uh, no, it goes right in the reverse, no problem. Okay. But when you go from reverse to drive, it it, it takes you know, three or four seconds before it, and sometimes you have to rev the motor up a little bit and then let off, and then it'll go into drive. And then I notice a couple, uh, sometimes it's, it's slow to shift like in the overdrive gear when you're on the highway. Okay. Um, so, now, now when so, you... I mean, the fluid, the, flu the fluid is extremely clean, red, red as anything. It doesn't smell burnt, nothing like that. Yeah. You now, know? when you accelerate from a dead stop, do you get slippage at that point? Uh, a, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, if I, if, if I go, if I accelerate slow, it, it, it doesn't, but if I nail it pretty good, it, it, it does slip a little bit. Do you know which transmission do you have? Do you have an E4OD or a 4R70W? Well, it is... Well, it is a full. It is full wheel drive. It wouldn't matter. Uh, uh, there's two different possibilities. There's a 4R70W, and then of course there's the E4OD. Uh, there's two different transmissions that they used in that truck, and they, it could have used either one of them. Uh, I would be uh, curious. There's a there's a servo. There's servos. Where, where's the Where's the tag on it for the numbers? You know. Uh, what you need to do is look underneath the vehicle and look at the oil pan that's on the transmission, and then go and look at service kits online. 
and then you can tell by which service, what your, uh, your pan shape of what transmission you have. The E4OD is a huge pan. I mean, it's gigantic. I mean, it's a big, big yeah, pan. Actually, actually, no, actually, I'm under the truck looking at it now because I got it all jacked up. Uh, I, I don't see any numbers other than a, a 35 number on it. Yeah. That I can speed. Well, look at the pan, and then you can that, look at the tranny pan, and then go online for transmission service kits, and you will be able to look at the at the gaskets that come with those kits to identify which one yours is. We need to know what that is, and if you can, Keith, give me a holler back here, and just uh, after you figure this out, and then uh, we'll take your call back here uh, in a few minutes after you figure that out, and then I, I might be able to guide you a little better on this, but we appreciate your call. Give us a holler back. 